just the camera for you. Just... There we go. It's your boy, the Big G, the Dorian. We here to record, to review this week's episode of AEW Dynamite. Now that we open the show off with a tag match. Get you. I guess for this part, I'll finish the record. We open up with the debut of FTR going up against the Butcher and the Blade without the bunny. So it's only two Bs, no three. So this by far has been the best and most fundamental tag match since AEW's inception. Conception. Like, like it was actually good, but not only that, it was so hard hitting. It was so real to form of traditional Southern wrestling and that particular style of, of, of wrestling. And honestly, it goes to show a theory that I've had for a long time is that the Butch and the Blade can look good, but they are traditional. They need guys that are not so up and high flying. And not to say that, you know, high flyers can't work with them, but more so the fact that these guys look will look their best in a traditional tag match, traditional wrestling, or, so, or as... Um, my contemporaries like to say a little bit of the old school, and old school is what we got. This was dancer a great match only with the sprinkling on top. The fact that you had Tully and Arn watching the Brain Busters, two members of the Horsemen, the one of the greatest factions in all of wrestling. Honestly, it's it, it was such a good fight. Now, me, I'll be honest, I am a I am fond of high flying. I'm Han. I am fond of high technical wrestling, but this was great. Not only that, but also after the match goes to the Brain Buster win, but not. But let me point out a couple of spots. Two, two, like three spots that I, two spots they got to me, and one. Stand said it. One, we had the Butcher and the Blade doing a swinging. Um, looks like a deep six or black hole slam that looked very fucking nice. But not only that, we also had. Um, a avalanche, a superplex off with an elbow drop. Definitely a good move that could have finished the match. That was from Dax and Cash. That was nice. Didn't do it, but you know what? The best, the the thing that really got it for me was the was the new name for the Shadow Machine. It's called the Good Night Express. Honestly, honestly, I, I have to say it. I need I need Jim Cornette to be these guys' manager in AEW and hell everywhere else they go in wrestling. That was fucking great. That was a great match. Afterwards, we got all the key tag teams coming out and trying to get a swing at the buck at the Bucks and FDR. Why the Bucks? Because the Bucks came out. And if you haven't checked my reaction video, then go check it out. But the Bucks came out for proper introductions and let them know who's been running tag team wrestling for the past decade. Then big old jump in. But honestly, that was a good note. Starting off strong. Now let's go into the next one. Wait, wait, because I forgot something, because I didn't do it last week. Coming back, we have some more tag team action as we have the number one, number two, number... The number one, number two, number five, and women's champion are in the tag match. We have, that's Hikaru Shida, Chris Statlander going up against Nyla Rowe and Penelope Ford. And I must say... That the, that these that these women in particular, I see y'all know can of chill in the back. Don't worry about that. I'll make it a little different. Just chill. Are out here, you know, putting the names out there, but also elevating the women, elevating the um, impression about AEW women's tag women women's division in their performances. Because this is actually a, this is actually like one of the smoothest matches all with the women have had so far. Uh, minor mess ups. Everybody seemed to be on page. It was actually really good, solid. And then it told the story that I suspected was going to be going in, which is that this is going to be Penelope Ford's night uh, moment to shine because she has been getting a little buzz. She's been getting a little bit no more notoriety. She's been getting her face out there a bit more, especially coming out with Kip. So we're going to be seeing Penelope Ford getting up, getting getting a good push because she got the win on our on our women's champion, Hikari Shida. So where is it going to go? I don't know. Hopefully they do not rush her ascension into contention, but I am looking forward to it. Also, we get noticed that next week we're going to have another tag match. We're going to have we're going to have the AEW tag team belts on the line as Hangman Page and Kenny Omega go up against the Nightmare Family. Now, this is the first time that we're actually having the Nightmare Family going up against the Elite. Very interesting. Very interesting. But 
I don't think it's much of a story there just yet. Definitely something to look for, something that they should should actually start paying attention to as they start taking Kenny away from taking Cody. I'm sorry, away from the elite. Um, and then also post match we do get um, we do get a little video from a little uh, vignette from Britt Baker as well as Darby. And both definitely went bet went great for character development and growth. I dug them both. Also, Tony fucking Hawk. What's to be expected? But enough of that. We got to go on to the next one. Um, going on, keeping the ball rolling. We going three for three in tag matches. Although this is going to be a trios match. Trios tag match. We talking six-man action, baby. As we have the inner circle, proud and powerful, and Jake Hagar going up against Orange Cassidy and the best friends. And much to what has become a staple of their matches, it was pure chaos, fighting in and all around the ring, brutal, but definitely entertaining. Um, the big thing to talk about is the post-match beatdown because I, sh I want to do a reaction, but I've already done like two. I can't do a whole lot of reactions, but Jesus fucking Christ. Like, I'm mad Jericho beat me to the pun, but literally, Orange got beat. Orange got beat to a bloody pulp, literally. Blood and pulp. God damn. With a 20-pound bag of oranges. Not to mention he's over here got busted somewhere in the ear the hard way. Not quite sure how it happened, but it was definitely a terrible visual. This will lead to Orange versus Chris. I cannot wait for that match. But definitely it's building towards the fact that um, the best friends have a guaranteed title shot at Fighter Fest. Now... Many people, and I'm starting to feel I feel the same way with them, have an issue by which by, have an issue with the system by which they are allowing their tag team champions to operate because or the champions period because we have we have Omega and Paige set up for Fighter Fest or at least the tag team belts set up for Fighter Fest, which we're all expecting to be Hangman and and Kenny. Problem is that next week they have a title match, and I believe they had a title match last week. Oh, no, they had a, they had a title match pre previously, even though um, Cassidy, I mean, even though Best Friends won the rights to the challenge for the belt. This is problematic because I don't like the belts being put on the line if you already have number one contender set up. Much like it should go with the TNT title, the women's title, and even the main title, you should definitely have, you should definitely have the focus building towards that match be between the contenders and the champions. Or don't have them interact, or don't have them interact at all, and do not have the you have the belts put on the line. Cause contendership, sure, why the fuck not? You could, I say, if you feel the need to, you can uh, wager one's contendership. I wouldn't have no issues with that, but not the belts if you already have contenders lined up and ready to go. Now then, this works if there is no set plan built into a pay per view. But when you have a pay per view set up and you have a match set up. Due to the fact that unless you're going to make it an active possibility that the titles can legitimately change pre, pre tapings, then that's fine. But for now, it's a, it's a little cautious to me. I'm already, I'm, I'm just gonna, you know, hope that I hope that they get get around to it. But still, pretty decent action. And God, damn. And this is basically just showing a fucking bad ass, a, a, a mean ass Jericho until my until Tyson comes back. Come on, Tyson. You know we still looking for it, baby. We still looking for it. Anyway, I gotta get back to the show. So following on at the next match for the evening. Whew. Sorry, a little harder. Following all that action, the next match of the evening, uh, we have. Cole Cabana versus Sam Guevara. Tell two men who have been on a bit of a losing streak, and one of those men, or maybe both of those men, is going to change. Let's discuss. Because the match itself was, fucking, was actually great. Honestly, another, the so far looks like another solid night of performances in ring. Very few botches, except maybe in the opener. F, FTR definitely had a little bit of ring rust, but still managed to put on something good. But this was actually pretty good. Like It was, it was amazing to see that Cole Cabana can still go to distance can go the distance 20 years in the business with a guy with a guy as young and as athletic as Guevara Guevara showing why he is definitely one of the future stars in the company. But tonight was Sammy's night as Sammy came out with the win. Because Colt, much like other reason, he's been he's been falling short. He's been 
out of his out of his out of his comfort. He's been messing up and greatly and it's been costing him matches. That's how he took his L tonight, and so now what is Cole gonna do? As he's there on the ground, wondering to himself, what the fuck is going on? Where will I go? Out comes the dark order. With it with Evil Uno and Stu Grayson back in the fold. So the Dark Order has in full force. Well, except for 10, 10 still hurt. But out of all that, everybody comes up. We have Grayson, Uno. We got we got Silvers and... I can't remember the other guy's name. But sorry. Then we have uh, 10 over there on the side. I believe I saw 5 and out comes Mr. Brody Lee. On the help, help him come up and then just walks away. He doesn't say anything, doesn't make an offer, he just walks away. And after that, we have Colt. As he's walking away, instead of going to the entrance that he came out of, he decides to follow the Dark Order. So we could be seeing a, main, a, a, a total change for Colt Cabana, which is definitely going to be interesting. 20 years in, he's been boom, boom for a long time. That's how he made his money and to be recreate himself right now was actually pretty interesting. I'm, this, we're probably going to see a more serious Cabana. He's probably going to lose a lot of his comedy spiel, which is definitely going to, it's definitely an inter interesting move. But afterwards, Sammy gets on the mic. He's like, this is my moment. I'm the winner playing my music. And he gets to cut a promo whenever one Matt Hardy comes out to give Sammy some words of encouragement, basically telling him, Sammy, you must if you want to be the true future of this, I'm sorry, I'm, I am a broken mind friend. But it, basically, if you want to be be the top star in the future of AEW like you're meant to be, you got to lead it in a circle, buddy. You got to get from Chris, which means that we are starting the Sammy departure from the inner circle storyline. This is good. This is good. There's a lot of story building going on. Matter of fact, before the match started, we saw Billy Gunn cut a bit of a promo when Maxwell Jacob Freeman interfered. And it started, and basically was like, why don't you go ahead and try and get one of your trash ass sons in, in the ring before almost getting his ass smacked? So Billy Gunn is gonna go up against Warlord and maybe Max if I'm lucky. And I'm definitely down for that. Honestly, I'm waiting for the Gun Club to go ahead and make the debut. Also, post match, we also get a we get a ving, we get a uh, video video package for jo for Joey Janela, who's been. Off his game since the guy that came into AEW having a bad ass. Uh, um, a hardcore, hardcore extreme match against John Moxley. Like honestly, and this, basically, this is gonna be more, adding more to the tag division. They're making sure that this is gonna be a full division because it's basically showing the formation of his tag team on Dynam on Dynamite proper, not on Dark with um. Ah, dang it, dang it! I can't, I can't remember his name. Uh. Black gay dude, gymnast, um, <sighs> Sonny Kiss, Jesus Christ, I forgot. Also, he was also, uh, he was also something else on, on Lucha Underground. That's what was getting, because I was trying to remember his Lucha Underground name. But yeah, Sonny Kiss. So, you know, I, I definitely will be looking forward to this. Also, we got to, we're getting back to it. Okay, so I got to get back to this action. Y'all get ready for the next part of the review. <sighs> All right, so, coming back to... From commercial break, we get we get a follow up of Cole Cabana about the uh, the unfortunate incident that he went through. Cole's not in a good mood. Obviously, we can tell that, but you know what can be done. And also, we get a breakdown for next week's schedule. We are going to see the Sex Gods versus the Best Friends. With as I mentioned, as I was talking about earlier, their number one their number one tag championship contention on the line, which could be big. This could definitely be a nice set going forward. That way, it's not just the main belts on the line, but you could actually have a whole card change, which definitely intrigues me. So now it's basically showing that nothing's off the table, and no pay-per-view is going to be guaranteed. Uh, following that, we get John Moxley coming in, looking pretty beat, better than beaten. Sorry. Yes. I mean, he's going to talk about how, you know, my neck hurts, my back hurts, hurts, take shit. And uh, he's basically just like, don't, but what gets me peeved off is these guys talking smack about me and acknowledging, hey, Taz is one of the great smack talkers of all time, without a doubt. Also, the greatest, 
you know, in-ring talents of all time. Let's be honest. His suplex capabilities and in-ring skills and performances during ECW are monstrously underrated and, un and untalked about. Ruined it. Anywho, but he's so loud and boisterous about it that Taz and Silas comes out and he's like, you know what? I'm done. I'm tired of this. You come out here talking all this trash while I'm in my trailer trying to take care of business. All in all, while they're over here chirping, out comes mother. Out comes the machine. Brian. Dang, she just runs in like a fucking monster in jeans and just snow shirt. Like, God damn, he's a scary ass dude. But Mox ain't afraid of that ass. He's going to get in on me. He's trying to bust his head, bust outside the head with a pipe. Doesn't do it. Cage is like Trump about to go ahead and like look like he's about to wild bomb him. Taz's like, nah, nah, the point has been proven. Let's go. But Cage ain't about to take all that. So he slams that ass through, the, through a rear window of somebody's car. I feel bad for that person. Their car got fucked up. But, but, still with some solid ass action. And then also we got to get the bill to, the to this week's main event, which is going to be the TNT Championship on the line. Cody versus Mark Quinn. Definitely going to dig it. Also, private, basically Private Party comes out. They have a new theme song. I fuck with that. It, that's like a bang. It's a, it's a bang. Get them shots. 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 When we get, when we get uh, live performances back, it's going to be shit. Like, it's going to be so fucking great. Uh, but also, Hardy Party continues, which actually has me to say this. If Hardy stays in if both parties stay in conditions long enough for Jeff to come over to AEW, Hardy Party could be its own faction. I'm digging it, but you know, now we gotta go into the main event action. Last transition before we get it going. Let's go. That was a hell of a main event. Two two in a row, Cody. Two in a row. Um, my God, I, 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 I got to get to it. So, Quinn v. Cody. Quinn coming off of a leg injury. Cody coming off already getting his head busted open the hard way last week. Hard way. So, now it's a matter of what's, who's going to give out and who's going to, you know, put out. And to be honest, this looks scary for Cody. Quinn. With a with a the knee and Cody worked it over early in the match. Even still, Mark Quinn still put on a hell of a showing. Um, the heights he went, the the smart counters that he had, such as whenever Cody was trying to set up was trying to set up for the rope break, the swing under. Mark Quinn stops, kicks him over, hits him with a moonsault. Um, the countering him, countering a uh, toss over outside the ring for him to go on it after already hurting his knee, doing two other additional ones. Then there was a moment where. Uh, Cody went for a suplex. Quinn caught himself, hit a hit, went from a reverse neckbreaker position into a corkscrew DDT in the smoothest emotions. And if this man was 100, percent this would have been his match. Cody catching him, going for the um, going for the moonsault. You know that high action, beautiful moonsault that Mark Quinn has. Catches into an angle lock, which he transitions. Onto the ground and then uses his other leg to actually push the push the leg back, putting way more too much strain on the knee. Quinn taps out, but it was such a good fucking match that I agree with Jr. We gotta run this back for number two for for a repeat. But then again, I also say the same thing with um the little talked about little uh, few situation between uh, Darby Allen and Cody too, because they gotta they gotta run one more for one more as well. This was an amazing match. Right as Quinn is leaving, Jake Hagar's big ass comes out. See, at the top, I'm like, damn, this looks menacing as fuck. But at the same time, I'm down for this next fight only for him to attack both Cody and put his hands on Arn. Well, put his hands on, on Arn first and then Cody. Him. Then, you know, fucking Hardy Party had to step up. Mark Quinn still hobbling. With chance to take out him. Then you got the inner circle coming out as well for a complete fight. In which the 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 impromptu group managed to put Finn off the inner circle, who are coming off of an amazing fucking night. Great night, great showing. Everything was smooth. A number of stories being told and being set in development. This is still great. AEW continuing with great shows. This one, I'm gonna go ahead and give it a because I feel like some people might. People still feel like I'm old, like I'm giving too much props to AEW. But AEW has been doing pretty well. I would say AEW has been in the A N T in the upper B to A category, but for the most part, I've been doing A's. 
Especially when they can give me a night where there's amazing storytelling, great in reaction with little, with no hiccups. Now, I must admit, there were hiccups in the opening FTR match. Then again, these boys aren't coming off of a long-term rest. Hello, Ring Rust, like, what, almost half a year of no action? I'm not going to fault them for it, and for the most part, they did all right. So that is definitely going to keep me keep it from being that, you know, solid A territory. And even A minus, I'm not going to be, I'm going to be real. On the, just on ring action alone, I'm going to make this a B plus, but this is still an amazing show. B plus, and if you feel like I'm underdoing, if you feel like I'm, like I'm not giving it the proper deserve just because, then obviously I'm going to have to say A, I'm going to have to give it an A minus. But in ring action matters as much. Jericho in the ring, the story being told with the inner circle, what um, the story being built around Sammy Guevara. Uh, what's going on with, you know, uh, yeah, with Coke Bannon in the circle? Is he actually going to accept and become the next recruit? Um, Penelope Ford actually getting a pin on the champion. So that's actually setting them up for some action down the line. Now, I am a little saddened that we didn't get another women's match. I feel like two women's matches a night or a show could definitely do some work for AW because it's most because it's basically been heavy on tag action, not enough single stuff. And I do want more from more women, but we also have to accept we don't have all the women with AEW right now. Um I can I I just cannot fault the show. This was a great and solid show. Um, please, if you made it this far, I appreciate you for watching the video. Thank you so much. Please like, share, and subscribe. Talk to me in the comments. Hey, let's go ahead and get this thing on and popping. I feel like talking about some wrestling. I want to know everybody's opinions on the AEW. Good, bad, ugly. Keep it honest. Don't be hateful. Anyway, it's your boy WG Doria calling it a night. Peace.